Well, Ms. Brennan, what we just saw here is uh, pretty shocking. There are always limits to what can be accomplished when the American people choose divided government. But of course, it doesn't mean Washington shouldn't work toward bipartisan solutions. We worked in good faith all year, all year long, to formulate a package that both parties could support. The top Republican on the Finance Committee, Senator Hatch, engaged in months of good faith negotiations with the top Democrat on the committee, Senator Wyden. They consulted closely with colleagues over in the House, like Chairman Ryan. They consulted closely with President Obama, with Democrats, with Republicans. So the rationale for voting yesterday, a vote that would simply have allowed the Senate to debate the issue, was overwhelming. It was supported by the facts, and yet voices in the President's party who rail against the future won out today. Well, this was no small accomplishment to get it as far as it has come, given the various points of view on the Finance Committee, and Chairman Hatch and Senator Wyden deserve a lot of credit for that. But they didn't go through all of that to stall out here. Other countries are taking a look at us. They're wondering whether we can deliver. We hear TPP is close to being finalized. And here's the headline they see, that every single one, with one exception, I believe, of the President's own party in the Senate, prevented the mechanism for having trade considered, prevented it from even coming to the Senate floor. My friend, the Majority Leader, has one person to blame for our not being on the floor now debating this important piece of legislation. And that person is the majority leader. Next time he looks in the mirror, he can understand who is responsible for not having a debate, as he said, with robust amendments. It's him. Mr. President, the reason for this situation we're in today is very simple. The Finance Committee reported four bills out by a large bipartisan vote out of the Finance Committee. The Majority Leader decided on his own that he would consider two of those, and the others would have to figure out some other way to get done. As the Republican Leader said this morning in his opening statement, let's move to those two bills and then we'll start the amendment process. Mr. President, do all four start the amendment process? It's very logical. What I just said, it's illogical what he has stated. That's all we ask is a pass forward, a real, realistic path for all of us to proceed on this legislation. If uh, we're stuck here, it's too bad. We shouldn't be. Obviously, the, the most sensitive political issue surrounding this is the currency issue. And I want to make sure everybody has a clear understanding of where we are on that. I explicitly did not offer the currency amendment to the TPA bill. So currency in the committee agreed they would deal with it on the customs bill and not on TPA. And now our friends on the other side are trying to bunch it all together. But look, we need to be clear here. The currency issue on TPA is a killer. The president would veto the bill. It would defeat the bill. I'm not an expert on the bill, and I don't intend to debate anyone here on the merits of the bill. People know how I feel about the, the uh, legislation generally. But I am kind of an expert on the procedural aspect of what goes on around here. And I suggest the best way to move forward is to come up with a program to have all these bills discussed at the same time. Um, and that's why we have felt the way we did and we indicated that in the vote we just took. So I think everybody should just take a deep breath. And um, I think there are probably ways we can move forward on this without um, uh, disparaging either side.